and I talked a lot, though, Reverend, after uh, the verdict in the Trayvon Martin case. You said that needs to be a moment. Many others said the same right. thing. We have also seen it, as you alluded to, uh, you led a march yesterday after another black man died in, in an incident involving police in New York City. Now you are going to be giving the eulogy for yet another funeral tomorrow. What's it going to take for that moment to change things, really? I think it's going to take legislation. Our demonstrations must lead to legislation. We need federal legislation. And we need the criminal justice system, which is why the federal government coming in is so important. You know, th this whole thing really, uh, let, let, we're, we're welcome back. We're joined by James Toronto, columnist for The Wall Street Journal and editor of its online editorial page, OpinionJournal.com. Hey, James, welcome back, sir. Thanks. Good to be here. Uh, I, I, first of all, let's get uh, credit where credit's due as far as Barack Obama. You, you praised um, uh, the remarks that he made. Uh, they, I think they were much uh, better than uh, what he said about Trayvon being a, he could be his son and the Cambridge cops acted stupidly, uh, stupidly. So when I compare them to those remarks, I, I do say, and I did at the time, that uh, he handled it in a much better uh, fashion. Yes, I think he's learned that the best thing a president can do uh, when faced with a situation like this is to go out of his way not to inflame matters further. And uh, he perhaps unintentionally did so in those earlier cases, but I think that he was wise not to here. All right. Now, on the other hand, you got Al Sharpton. You know, I, it, it's going to take legislation. And they point, as Jesse Jackson did on Fox News Sunday, to Amadou Diallo, to Trayvon Martin. Uh, those two cases were, were, they were, they were indictments. Uh, there was a trial, there were minorities on the jury, and, and the defendants were found not guilty. In one case, George Zimmerman, in one case, police officers. Uh, I mean, what more do, 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 does the Al Sharpton um, movement and the Jesse Jackson movement want? Well, I mean, when you think about what Al Sharpton does for a living, to the extent that he does anything, it is to go around and protest things like this and insert himself into these uh, situations. So, I, you know, the idea that he's proposing quote-unquote legislation, uh, we have no idea what such legislation would consist of. Obviously, it's already illegal to murder somebody. <laughs> it's illegal for the police to use excessive force. You can't pass a statute saying... Uh, you know, policemen who are charged uh, do not get due process, are not entitled to, the re to reasonable doubt and so forth. And obviously policemen have to be able to use force when, when uh, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and so I don't think that there is uh, a legislative solution to this, but I don't think it's necessarily in Al Sharpton's interest to have a solution to this uh, because uh, it's uh, what he does uh, to make uh, a living. Of course. And, and, and let's be honest here. In the Trayvon Martin case, uh, you know, we started out getting the, um, the uh, narrative from the media that he was a young man skipping home with uh, iced tea and Skittles. And uh, we found out, you know, he was on top of George Zimmerman bashing his head into the concrete and punching him in the face. Uh, we know from the reports we've heard, and we've only heard reports on both sides, uh, that the police officer here uh, was punched in the face. His gun was, uh, there was a struggle over his gun. Uh, that Michael Brown, who had just robbed a store, uh, or as Al Sharpton ha would have us believe, shoplifted at a store, um, was then running and then turned around and, and, and might well have been charging at the officer. Um, these seem like strange cases to, to, to tie your, your, your strings to. In other words, I, I'm sure there are instances where uh, there are perfectly uh, innocent people who tragically get killed. but. Uh, these two instances I'm telling you, I'm, I'm naming here, Trayvon Martin and, and, and Michael Brown, may not be the ones uh, uh, to, to hold up as examples. Well, the Trayvon Martin case was a little bit different because that wasn't a policeman. It right. was, uh, I mean, I guess you could say uh, he was a neighborhood watchman. Uh, Zimmerman was a sort of a, a wannabe cop. Uh, and I think, what ha I think part of the problem in the Trayvon Martin case was just that the uh, police uh, perhaps too readily accepted Zimmerman's story and didn't conduct a full enough investigation. And uh, you know, perhaps if if they had been, if they had done more due diligence to begin with, it wouldn't have become as inflamed as it did. In this case, as I understand it, uh, there was a story in the New York Times saying that one of the reasons the neighborhood was so inflamed in Ferguson was because the body was left sitting there for four hours after the shooting, 
and uh, they didn't cover the body up the way I, I policemen are trained to do. Right. Now, I think, I mean, a lot of the problem in a place like Ferguson is it's a small city. Uh, they have uh, crime, but they don't, you know, they've, they're not necessarily prepared to deal with uh, something on this level. I don't know if they've had, uh, I don't know how often they've had, if, they, if this may be the first time they've had a, a police killing like this. It's certainly the first time they've been in the national spotlight. Uh, so I, but I, I think that one can certainly criticize the police's handling of it. Uh, and in any case, I, I, you know, it, it, it has turned into a national controversy, and, uh, and it is what it is. Uh, I, for example, have no problem with uh, the Justice Department doing its own investigation. Well, do you have a problem with Eric Holder going there and saying this is personal? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a legal uh, ba basis to later on at a trial say that the case was tainted because of that. Uh, but, I mean, certainly it's kind of unprecedented. Well, I wish that Holder, instead of saying I'm the attorney general, but I'm also a black man, had said it the other way around. I'm a black man, but I'm also the, the attorney general. Good point. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the one criticism I would have of Obama's speech last week along similar lines is he said, uh, it's important for me not to prejudge the situation. I wish he had made that a hortatory statement instead of a self-descriptive one. It's important for us not to prejudge the situation. Uh, I think it's worth reminding people who may be upset about this and, and may think that an injustice has been done, that that hasn't been established and we have a process uh, to establish uh, I, what, what happened uh, and, uh, and to mete out justice if, uh, uh, if so. Absolutely. We've got 30 seconds. Do you think that by Holder going there and saying what he said, if it raises expectations and if there's not an indictment, it'll be even worse than it would have been? I don't think there's any way to know, and I think Holder's going there, if anything, probably had an immediate calming effect, which is, uh, which is a good thing. Gotcha. James, great talking to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, you too. My pleasure. Columnist for The Wall Street Journal and editor of its online page, OpinionJournal.com, James Toronto, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, very interesting, and we're going to be back next with the founder and editor of, and I want to get this right, Terroirist. Terroir is, it's a French word, dot com. Terroir is dot com, I'm saying it wrong. David White, and a uh, very interesting conversation about how the wine industry has been affected by the earthquake. Stay tuned for your Newsmax Now update.